Thank you for listening in to yet another Resilient Entrepreneur podcast. This is Kevin Johnson of Leverage Consulting. And as you know, I tend to bring you pearls and tips and questions, things you should be asking yourself. Well, today, what I'm going to talk to you about is how bad data can be costly. Some of you who know me know that I spent some time in accounting and I got my degree in accounting. I worked in that for a period of time. I have an affinity for numbers. I feel that numbers tend to tell the story. Numbers can be a predictor of the future. Numbers can be something that we can influence to have different results in the future. And oftentimes when I'm working with clients, and, and as you've heard me say in previous podcasts or talks, um, I work as an offsite CEO for a lot of clients. I like to treat it as if it were my own. I want to know what's going on and how we can make things better. That's in a sense, that's, that's um, a lot of the reason why I've gravitated to do what I do because I like influencing things to get a different result, th make things better and different in the future. And too many times I see that we have bad data or no data. And I'd say sometimes no data is kind of like bad data. So that being said, those of you who are an owner, a manager, a doctor, a builder, a real estate agent, whatever, whatever it is, the business that you own or work in, think of yourself as sitting at your desk and you have a cockpit around you. Think of just like in an airplane cockpit, you have all these gauges in front of you that give you all different types of readings. And why do you think the, the pilot has all those things in front of them? Well, this is to ensure that they have a successful takeoff and landing at the next destination. And in a sense, that's what, that's what all these numbers are here for you as well, is to make sure that whether we're, we're approaching the correct altitude, we have enough fuel to get us from point A to point B, and so on. So I, was, I wanted to share a couple different stories or a couple different things for you to think about. One of them is, do you know what your performance indicators are? Some kind of have an idea, some don't. And if you had a dental practice of some type, you want to know, well, how many new patients am I getting per month? Well, that tells me how my practice could be growing, but we also have to know how many are we potentially losing every month. We also need to know how many of a certain type of procedure we're doing. We need to know, and, and this is actually one that kind of gets to one of my stories, is there are certain things that we need to know just to ensure that we're maintaining the health of the practice so we can ensure that we pay the bills, we can make payroll, we can do other things, we're building for the future so you know we can have all these am amazing team members and we can have all this stuff but it doesn't mean that it's all here forever so for example if you i mean imagine if you built an office today it's awesome right you know i mean you have all the latest technology and the latest everything is gray theme you know that's great right but people who built their office in the 70s thought the same thing but you walk into one now and it looks a little outdated it looks worn so those things need to be updated a lot of the equipment only lasts for x number of years so we have to have money or enough cash cushion set aside that we can reinvest in the business. And that, too, is a performance indicator. It's one of those things that we need to know what's going on with our business so we can build out for the future. So as one of the things that I was look, looking at for one client, and it just oddly materialized for a number of clients, was we were looking at their accounts receivable, and we started seeing that, that something doesn't seem quite right. And we started digging into it. And for example, with the one right now, it, it's, and this is a great example of, of data that is just not right. And, you know, it kind of leads us to it's bad data. And that is when we looked at their, their data and we started, pull, and we can look at the summary number and something just doesn't look right. Something just, just, it creates question. Well, that's the thing where we need to start scratching and digging and, and looking to uncover, well, why doesn't it look right? Because sometimes if it, if it just doesn't look right, it's probably not right. And, and oftentimes it's one of two things. Either it's, this is just a garbage in, garbage out. If you've ever seen the, the computer term Geigo, that's what it is, garbage in, garbage out. 
because if you put bad data in, or we just don't know the proper way to input data to make sure we get good information out, then that's going to lead us to bad data. And that's what's happened with a couple of clients where we, we really we uncovered that uh, some newer team members did not know the proper procedure to collect monies from patients and ensure that everything was cleared out of their system. So it looked like they were doing phenomenally well and their AR was dropping. And, and over time, it looked like it was dropping. But what it was really amounting to is they had all these credits in the system, which really weren't credits. They collected the money, but they had all these credits in the system. They weren't applying it properly within their software. So in a sense, because they weren't finishing the task, the data that they were pumping out was bad. So ultimately, I've discovered that with the clients in a couple different places. Um, but another one is even paying attention to those numbers. And right now, I'm digging through another one where with this with a client, um, we went back through and looked at trends through their practice. And we looked at the trends of the numbers, whether with their production and their write-offs and their collections and their accounts receivable, and looking at it over a couple of years. And literally, in just in this in the year-to-date numbers for this year, there there it it appears right now that there's ninety-seven thousand dollars we can't account for. And usually, the first thing is we rush towards something that people can assume that somebody's got their hand in the till, and you know, oftentimes, again, it's just bad data, but we got to know, we got to be, we have to be paying attention to these numbers to ensure that we have good data to start with. And if we're watching them monthly, minimally, if we're at least taking a look at some of these numbers monthly, then we can catch something when it's small and make those corrections. Now, mind you, some of the ones going back to the last example, they are, they're having to go back a couple years to clean some things up. So for one or two of the ones, they're having to clean this up going back a couple years. Um, now, you know, and one of them was this. This is someone who's who's, um, you know, they've kind of acqu- they've acquired a practice, so they're acquiring the way things were done historically. So that'll be a, a cleanup thing. But once they have good data, they'll be able to manage it and know exactly what's going on. Um, then. With the, with the credits that are within the system, if they're not cleared out, then we're looking at an accounts receivable that is falsely showing that it's in a much better position than what it really is. And it may make us believe that, well, you, you have very little work to do or we've done a phenomenal job, but once we clear out all these credits, that accounts receivable is probably going to skyrocket. So all this, again, goes back to Bad data can be costly because if we if we weren't paying attention to these things, we may not realize that our accounts receivable itself has really been skyrocketing. And ultimately we may have money sitting out there that starts to age and over time, you know, you give accounts receivable a couple of months and the collectability of it starts to plummet by a lot. If I move on to another one here. It's also making sure that we get income statements monthly. And you may have an accountant or bookkeeper, may have an accountant or bookkeeper that comes in and works with you periodically. Maybe they give you an income statement every month. Um, Is your your income statement coordinated in such a way that we can interpret trends from year to year? Is it something that where it's organized in such a way that I can compare it to industry standards, which I'll say even a lot of people... In, your, in a given industry, they don't have it coordinated in such a way that they can compare it to, to an apples-to-apples apples comparison within an industry. So that's a really important point. But, the, but one of the biggest reasons you want an income statement monthly is so you can look, go through every month and figure out, are we spending money appropriately? Are we a high in a given area? It allows you to have awareness of where we stand and whether we need to make adjustments. And some of those adjustments may be cutting out um, expenses that we've had quarterly or monthly. We have subscription expenses. One of the other big ones, which are, if you go back to a preview, uh, another podcast I, I have done recently talking about your largest expense in running a business is likely your taxes. So 
if we're getting these things and getting the the overhead under control, one of the other things you can do by having a income statement monthly is we can also work with the accountant to figure out how we can lower our taxes because we have good data. We have data that we can give to the accountant and say, this is what it is. Once we've gotten to year end, or let's just say you give your accountant all your information in February of the next year, we can't do anything about it at that point. It's done. It's over with. We're just, we're a historian at that point. You want to be able to do things in the current tax year that are going to minimize your actual tax expense at year end. And that leads us to one of the things that I just mentioned is you want to leverage yourself and your efforts. You may have expertise in certain areas. You want your experts to teach you what you should be looking at. Or you want to leverage yourself in such a way that you tell them, these are my objectives and I need you to help me do that. And whether it's someone like myself or your financial advisor, your accountant, all three of us, this is the type of thing that we do to ensure that you are successful because in the end, this whole business is here to feed your big whys and ensure you retire happy, healthy, and with a nest egg that's going to fulfill your long-term dreams. So with that said, this has been a long one, folks, a little bit longer than normal, but it's a big topic. It's one I could go on and on and on about. But if you have questions about this, if you have any anything that you'd like to talk about, or if you'd like me to expand on this topic, but maybe do more of a deep dive in a certain area, let me know. I'd love to hear from you.